Hello everyone, welcome back to the shop and the time is at last come to install the Iron Oak. Wow, what a journey. You know, it takes months and months for me to build something where it's taking up space in the shop and you know, there's scrap lying everywhere and the shop is becoming a mess. And the idea to like get something out of the shop to where I can have like a nice fresh space again is wild. And just the fact that now it's gonna be in the place where I built it for is mind blowing. But before we go get sidetracked, first things first, let's take this thing apart. Now taking this monstrosity apart was a really good insight for me to be able to understand just how these elements come together and almost like giving an opportunity to reverse engineer what I built so that I can re-engineer it on site. Each limb weighs several hundred pounds. So it's one thing to be able to physically move these things around, but it's an entirely different one to be able to uh, come up with scenarios to, to create the rigging, you know, the chain falls and the chain, you know, the hoists to make these things happen and especially happen safely. I don't know if you've noticed, but these limbs are pretty much wild bundles of pretty much swords. They're sharp. So if any of these pieces of steel were to get out of control on me at any time, something's coming through me. It's gonna be pretty ugly sight. It was really magical getting all the limbs down and trying to find places in the shop for them because all of a sudden I was surrounded in this almost mystical steel like, like fairy land. But each individual limb almost felt like its own tree. It really uh, makes you feel good that each element looks good completely on its own, independent from the rest of the piece.
So on the drive out there, you know, nerves are a little heightened, you know, just think, anticipating any problems that might arise. But uh, the scenery going out to Mission San Antonio out here in California is so beautiful, so calming. I honestly, by the time the drive was done through the rolling hills and the beautiful groves of oaks, I almost couldn't help but be in a level of peace. And I, was, and I felt ready. Backed the trailer in and I rallied a few troops. I got some friends of mine together uh, as some extra muscle to help me get this thing together. So taking this tree apart is one thing. Putting it up completely off site is an entirely different one. And I stayed up over sleepless nights trying to imagine how am I going to get this thing back together? Because it all, the whole thing weighs almost 5,000 pounds. That's a lot of steel to be hoisting over your head. So I came up with a plan. What I did was I took apart my hoist that I, I put the thing up in. So I got the tree down, got the, the elements loaded onto the trailer, got everything arranged. Then the last thing I did was took apart the hoist that built the entire thing to begin with. This mission is hundreds of years old. So if I were to scratch some of the brick while carrying these limbs through, it would be disastrous. So when we're talking about threading the needle, trying to get this monstrosity through this courtyard, let me tell you what, it was a severe ordeal. To protect the tile floor getting into the mission, I laid down planks of wood and I felt like we were building the pyramids where, you know, my, uh, Russell, the biggest guy we had, uh, you know, kind of guided the, uh, the trunk forward. Meanwhile, the rest of us are laying boards down in front and taking them out from behind. And we ended up getting into a rhythm where we were really hauling, but we were cooking. It was great. We finally got it over dirt. The trunk was so heavy that it was pushing those steel wheels through the boards themselves. We had to overlap them and problem solve on the fly. But we finally got it there and I was able to hoist it up and then get it and guide it over the bolts. Careful not to shear any threads off or anything like that because a damaged thread into the concrete footing would be also very bad. So he lowered it down and it fit perfectly. Uh, cinched it down now that the trunk was stable. Then it was time to start arranging the limbs. My hoist, even though it was 12 feet in the air, 14 feet in the air, it wasn't high enough to get these limbs all the way up. So we got it close and then it was time to get up underneath and lift. Just enough time to get a bolt in there, cinch it down, and then lift it the rest of the way. It was a little dangerous. So we hoisted up the limbs and got all the bolts cinched down. And it was wild in no time. Suddenly there was a gigantic iron tree in the middle of this beautiful courtyard. And it was just almost surreal to see it there. It's been in my imagination, taking up space, residing there for so long. And then suddenly it was like gone. It was gone from the shop. It was out of my mind suddenly. And it was there where it was built to be. Felt extremely grateful for the guys that were able to give me a hand out there because without that extra pair of hands, I, I couldn't have done it. I maybe would have figured it out, but it would have been a lot harder and maybe I could have gotten injured. Who knows? Asking for help really pays off sometimes. The iron tree is now just, just that, iron. It's not copper yet. And I'm so excited for our next episode to get the copper leaves in place to where this dead tree becomes alive with a lush green canopy. And as always, my friends, thank you for watching.